The Rhodes Opera House was constructed in 1885 by prominent local physician Dr. Thomas Rhodes. Its cushioned seats and kerosene footlights made it the most modern building in Boyerstown at the time, and it became a popular venue for local entertainment, such as magic lantern shows, a precursor to films that used gas lanterns to project colored slides. One such show was taking place on January 13, 1908, during a benefit for St. John's Lutheran Church. 400 guests attended the event, filling the Opera House's seats and much of the standing room. The projectionist for the event was an inexperienced 21-year-old named Harry Fisher, who had received a mere two days of training when he was hired, far less than the three months usually required to learn the equipment, including the gas tank for the Magic Lantern's gas lamp. Later into the evening, while changing a slide, Fisher accidentally dislodged one of the gas lines, releasing gas into the room and emitting a loud hissing sound. Audience members became startled by the sound, and a commotion broke out as people attempted to find its source. This disturbance, in turn, attracted the attention of members of the production on stage. They partially opened the curtain to check on the audience, accidentally knocking over an oil lamp and a kerosene footlight, starting a small fire on stage. At the sight of the fire, panic spread throughout the theater, and audience members began rushing towards the exit. Soon, the fire spread to the kerosene tank that fed the stage lights, and engulfed the theater's curtains, walls, and soon the ceiling in flames. As guests reached the exit, they were crushed against the inward opening doors by a crowd behind them, trapping everyone inside. Fire exits were unmarked and or blocked, and the theater's windows were three feet off the ground, making them difficult to access, especially by children and women in the heavy dresses of the day. The fire would burn until 4.30 a.m. the next morning. When townspeople entered to clear the remains, they found bodies piled in a solid mass up to six feet high, so tightly wedged together that crowbars were needed to separate them. When all was done, 171 people were dead, nearly 10% of the population of Boyerstown. Beyond the scale of this tragic disaster and the impact it later had on fire safety laws, it's also remarkable for the reports of ghostly apparitions linked to the event. As soon as a few hours after the fire, an elderly man arrived at the scene and needed to be physically restrained from entering the building, later telling the police that he had seen his then-deceased wife in his home, telling him that she was waiting for him in the theater. Well after the event, people claimed to have heard screaming coming from the empty shell of the building, and to this day, hauntings have been reported in and around the theater, which was rebuilt and still stands in Boyerstown. If you'd like to learn more about historical disasters, hauntings, and other mysteries, I've included links below to videos and other resources. And if you like what I'm doing here and want to support me, please like, subscribe, and share on your social platform of choice. I post new bite-sized videos daily about mysteries, cryptids, aliens, and all things strange to kick off your day. See you tomorrow.